I come from a family of five siblings. Three older brothers and a younger sister who came 10 years, 10 days after me. I know because I was counting the days to having that little sister. Growing up with boys is definitely not easy. But before she came, I was the only girl and the last one. A position many would think would give me the opportunity to be a spoiled brat. <laughs> but that was not the case. There was a mother to contend with. And if I can be honest, I think most of the time I was never ready for the curveballs that she was throwing my way. Ruth Mweni, AKA the missus, as we aptly call her, was born as the firstborn to 12 siblings in Kangundo, at a time where her father was either off fighting in World War II and then working in Nairobi, which meant she was stuck helping her mother raise her siblings. Now, if you know parents from that generation, most of them grew up with that notion that children are to be seen and not heard, and school was optional. But my mother really wanted to go to school. She really wanted better for herself. And she worked hard, left the village, found herself at the Kenya Polytechnic, studied to be a cateress. Then she met my dad. He was a human resource manager at the then KBL. And um, for him, he had studied abroad, so Mrs. had reached her goals. And then came her three boys. And then the girl that she had been waiting for, who she aptly named Kaleche after her grandmother who coincidentally shared a name with her own mother. Now, this name, Kaleche, loosely translates into Kalet Go, as in, let her go. She has picked a path, let her go, that way. And it was no surprise that I was as headstrong as my great-grandmother, who, by the way, was a second wife and still leading the home as if she owned the place. Tough. That's the kind of person that Kaleches are. Now you know. That's why I'm the way I am. Anyway, when it came to how my mother was bringing us up, she had grown up in a draconian kind of setting. So to me, I expected that she would at least be a little bit more lenient with the tough titties of what you gotta do, when you gotta do, but that was not the missus. She brought me up the exact same way. One thing the missus did not like was lazy people. To her, she had a path to success that you needed to follow. And it was focus on your studies while taking care of your responsibilities at home, because anyway, you're a girl. And then make sure that you get a job with your name on the door for everybody to see. That will score you that right husband and you'll have a happy home. That was her sequence. Uh, needless to say, I'm not quite in that sequence. But anyway, the missus. For her, my kind of life, my choices were so difficult for her to handle. From my very early stage, we were already conflicting on a lot of things that she had, you know, concerns and fears about. Her biggest fear was that I would get pregnant before I got married. I'll never forget her reaction when I told her that I had just gotten my first period. It was Christmas Day, I was 13. And my mother said, there's no way. There's no way you're lying. And with that, I was completely mortified. Who else would I turn to? I mean, the rest of the house was full, full of men and a baby sister. So I kept it to myself. And for three years, struggling with the worst pain you can imagine, having nothing to use, I was balancing myself and keeping this a secret using either cotton wool or tissue. You see, I thought I did something wrong by starting my period. I thought, I really messed it up for my mom, so I'm going to really work on this by myself. It was a tough time. And I kept wondering, every time the school called her to tell her that I was in a lot of pain and I needed to go home, how was her reaction? What did you eat again? Yes, I was a chubby kid, you know, that is life. But she never really connected the two. The fact that this was happening every month in a systematic order. Her fear was really great. And so she pushed it out. By the time I was nine, I was sure I wanted to be on radio. I used to rush home to make sure I'm on time for 4 p.m. beat time on VOK. 
Voice of Kenya for those of you who are a younger audience. <clears throat> I'm just saying. Um, <clears throat> and I knew I wanted to be inside the radio like those people. I mean, that was what really moved me. My mother did not like that idea at all. And that was life for me. It was doing what the missus wanted, when she wanted, and that was non-negotiable. But you see, I was this extroverted child. And my mother's fears for me really were not coinciding with where I wanted to be. I just chose to follow what I liked, ignore what was going on in her world, followed music, acting. Oh, the missus was not happy with that. Before I knew it, I was in standard six and being told it's time to repeat that class. Why? Because you're not focusing on your studies. My grades were not all that bad. I could have proceeded. But to her, she felt the bad company in that class, combined with my desire for all these artistic things, needed to change. Oh, I was upset. My prebiosant self was like, I hate you! Of course, that was all internal, because those are not words you could utter out to the missus at any point in time. When I got to Form 2, I was shipped off from a Nairobi school all the way to deep down Ukambani in Borni Girls. In my mother's opinion, that was a school where I could be away from the boys or anybody who was derailing me. Mm, much to her disappointment, what did I do? I quickly joined drama club, debate club, music club, you know, all the places where you get to meet the cool boys. Not that I was interested in the boys, I mean, I had three older brothers. Was I able to talk to them? Uh, not really. <laughs> but it was just, I loved to be out there, talking to people and doing things. By the time I finished high school, I still wanted to do something in media. The missus said, absolutely not. You will go to USIU where your brothers are and you will find yourself a degree there. Not knowing what degree to choose if it wasn't media, I was down to actually picking them off my hand. Process of elimination. There was no way I was touching finance, business, or IT. I knew everything psychology in my opinion. I was left with international relations. I had no idea what it was. But much to my surprise, I really enjoyed my studies, and I really did well. I mean, there was so much with the factual reading, the research, everything came together. When I graduated with good grades, my passion for being on radio was still alive. And so when the opportunity came for me to now get a job with a team of guys who had access to a radio station, I jumped on it. I was working for Homeboys DJs. I was their office manager. I thought that was a cool title. <laughs> Ask the missus what she thought. Not so much. Atihu, boys, eh, who stay at home? And then they DJ. What kind of a life is that? Lord knows there was nobody she was going to tell that I had a job. In fact, everybody knew I was jobless. She was not happy. I later moved on to a production house and I had the opportunity to train as an editor. For me, this was the right path towards my dream of joining a radio station. The missus still didn't understand what I was doing. In fact, things got really crazy when I started working late hours, as an editor would. To her, I was either off partying with some dude looming in the background, or there was just something not right about this career path. It was not success. Because, like we said, success had a sequence in her mind. It was not until I finally got a slot to join KISS 100 that her eyes lit up. She knew the station, and she was more happy to hear that I was now going to be doing something that she could explain. I was joining as a news anchor and editor. Aha, she can now talk about me five years on. When it came to how she was relating to me as I went on working in this career and moving on to being a now presenter on a radio show, it was like a whole new turnaround. Suddenly, whenever she heard people say, oh, have you heard this presenter, Kale Chemumo? She would turn and she'd be like, ah, that's my daughter. You know her. Worse still, when we met with her friends and she wanted to introduce me, she'd be saying, have you met Kale Chemumo? You know, the one of Kiss 100? 
yeah, she's my daughter. So funny how the my daughter would come at the end of that conversation, because I would think you would lead with that. Everybody knows you're Mrs. Mumo, but not for my mother. This was her way of showing me that she was finally proud of what I had been working on for so many years. What a turnaround. Over the years, life has been quite interesting between us. I mean, things got better, we were able to speak. From the time I moved out of home and wasn't even bothered with going to visit her, we were now at a place where we could talk and we could actually see eye to eye. Of course, for the first half of that uh, turnaround, I was giving the tight hugs with one eye open. I wasn't too sure how long it was going to last. Right now, what this has done to me in terms of my relationships with the opposite sex, I still hold back. No baby, still marriage. So funny to hear her now say, you know, even if you're not getting married, so you can have a baby, even one, two, just one. And then I laugh it off and can easily tell her, no, I'm waiting just like you said I should. Ruth Mweni Mumo, my mother. She is my kryptonite and my biggest cheerleader. She is the reason I work hard, even without wanting to. Love our hater, we made a turnaround and are still working on it. Thank you.